Okay, today we're talking to Dr. Jo Marie Fisser. She is at the law faculty. That's right. Jo Marie, thank you for coming. Um, tell all of us, how did you become a researcher? Well, um, before I came to the university to dedicate my life to research, um, I was a prosecutor. Um, I've always sort of been, and I suppose I've always been a researcher in some way or another. When I was small, I read a lot, and I always wanted to know stuff about stuff. And when I practiced as prosecutor, it was very clear to me very quickly, as I'm sure it is for other practitioners, what the problems are. And there are some really big problems yeah. in the criminal justice system. But the frustration was um, I couldn't read. I couldn't spend the time to read up on the problems, to look for remedies, to really understand issues. Because, right. you know, you have to prepare for cases. So um, the other issue that I had was an incurable curiosity. I've always had it. Um, and those two, the curiosity on the one side and this really desire to know more, to much more and to be actively part of looking for solutions drove me back to the university where I now dedicate my life to research. Oh, lovely. And then um, what are you currently working on? What research gaps are you working on? Well, I was a scientist before I was a prosecutor, so my interests are very much um, at the crossover between science and law. So predominantly how forensic science is used in criminal trials. Um, and that's a really interesting subject, but it's also a really difficult subject because there are a lot of problems. Yeah. At the moment, uh, I used to look a lot at how forensic evidence is received in criminal trials. But at the moment, I am completely obsessed with how forensic evidence can cause wrongful convictions, oh, which yes. is a massive problem globally. And, you know, if you look at Netflix and all the programs and the awareness that's being raised around wrongful convictions, the problem is we don't know how bad it is in South Africa. Oh, we don't terrible. You know, we just see a small thing pop up in a newspaper. Absolutely. Yeah, it's upsetting. It's around us, everywhere. And I, I, th I feel that we are not safe, any of us, unless this problem is addressed and properly addressed. So that is my obsession at the moment, and that's what I'm working around. Okay. And any prominent research gaps you've identified? Well, in South Africa, quite a bit. Um, year about 2005, President, President Barack Obama from America um, di directed the National Research Council in the United States. That's just a really big council that does research on some scientific issues. He directed them to investigate the true reliability of forensic evidence. Okay. And in 2009, the report was published and it sent shock waves throughout the world. Um, you know, our understanding of what is reliable is so wrong. Yes. Um, our idea of what is a match, for example, between blood spatter or, or cartridges of a bullet or fingerprints even, is really not empirically researched. So yes. um, globally, the, the scientists really have stepped up to the plate. Lawyers are still struggling. We still rely too much on forensic evidence. We still don't really understand what something like error rate is. Um, we know what, the minute you start talking about statistical probabilities, most lawyers feel completely intimidated. Oh my. So especially in South Africa, we have a lot to learn about the true reliabilities of science, how science works and how it can assist us, and to stop over-relying on that type of evidence and come back to holistic criminal resolution. So at this point, um, there's a lot of, of gaps in the research, but that makes it exciting. It I does, think. it does. Yeah. It keeps it going. For sure. Okay. What words of wisdom have you got for any other aspiring researchers out there? Goodness. Um, first of all, I think it's sort of general advice would be to you know, cultivate the curiosity. Sure. Because if, you do, if you're not curious about things, I, I, I think that a, a, a career in research might be incredibly boring and laborious. But if you have curiosity and you just want to know things, then it's the most wonderful career you can ever imagine. Also cultivates a love of reading. I think those two go hand in hand. Definitely. I think it, it becomes you know, um, torture if you don't love reading and that's what you do for a living. And then also, in my specific area of research, you know, remain objective. objective ob objectivity in a researcher is, I think, the great neglected feature. I think we, that causes a lot of problems, especially in my arena of research. Objectivity and don't be scared of asking tough questions. And, yes. and you know, it, people don't like to hear that yeah. things are maybe not working. So don't be scared of the tough questions. Remain objective and, above all, curiosity. Okay, I spend a lot of time watching forensic evidence kind of things, CSI, all the rest mm -hmm. of it. What do you do for rest and relaxation? Well, I, I sometimes watch those things too. Um, but 
as cliche as it sounds, I'm, I'm a complete geek, I suppose, but writing and, and reading. Um, ever since I was small, I just loved how words can do magic. They can. You know, it, it, they can change people's minds, and I often teach my law students the, the magic of persuasive writing. They can change minds. I mean, if you look at the great speeches in history, it all, all flows from simple writing. Um, and what it can do to between people, and especially in a country like ours, where we all feel we, we struggle with language because yes. we all have accents and we all have second and third languages. And the truth is how beautifully we connect despite that. So I love words and I love everything to do with words. So I, I write quite a bit and I write from blogs to books to even I write a screenplay, oh, which is completely bad. <laughs> But just reading and writing is all my passions. Well, they say practice makes perfect. Hopefully so one day. you keep going, don't stop. <laughs> definitely not. Dr. Fisher, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us. Thank you. It was a privilege to be Wishing here. Wishing you the best. Thank you so much. Thank you.